In this presentation, we will discuss lump sum purchases as it relates to property, plant, and equipment. When we purchase something like a building, we typically have one lump sum purchase for more than just the building here because the building is on the land. And if we're including the land, we purchased the land with the building. If there are any other lease uh, improvements that we need to break out separately, then those two would be something that we need to break out in some way. This can be a little bit difficult given the fact that we have a lump sum purchase. A couple ways we could do this, we may take a look at uh, the property tax assessments and see what the breakout was done there in order to set, assess property taxes. We can also take an appraisal of the property and use the appraisal in order to make this assessment. The problem with this, however, is that the appraisal doesn't always match the purchase price. The appraisal may not have taken place right at the purchase price. We may, may not have purchased for the appraisal amount. So how then can we use the appraisal in order to create an allocation because that's the best thing we have in order to do so. Now it's also important to note that we need to break these things out. For example, uh, if we have a cost of 110,000 for the purchase of the store, which includes land, improvements and building we need to break these things out because they have different depreciable lives one we want to categorize them differently so that we know the value of the land versus the building and two we're going to allocate the cost over the useful life in different ways for the most part land uh, doesn't depreciate so whatever we apply to land will remain there forever and whatever we apply to building will then depreciate over the life of the building and that's a significant difference. So it really depends what our objective is when uh, we, we make this allocation in terms of which would we rather have. We want to be as objective as possible, but just from the perspective of the company, if you want it to look better, then you probably want to have land have more of the allocation because the building's going to deteriorate over time. As it does so, the building will decline in value on the balance sheet. The balance sheet will go down and will record expenses related to that deterioration that called depreciation, bringing down net income. If on the other hand, we want to make net income smaller for tax purposes, then we might want more in building than in land. We'd wanna allocate this 110,000 more to building than land because the building is gonna be depreciated and that'll bring down net income, whereas the land will not. So. If we have the appraised amount, if we have an appraisal of $35,000 for the land, $15,000 for improvements, $90,000 for the building, that totals up to $140,000. That, of course, different than the cost. The cost was only $110,000. So how can we use this $140,000 in order to allocate a different amount, one hundred and ten? dollars One way to do that is to use a kind of ratio. And this is going to be important. It's useful for many different areas. And so it's a really good concept to know here. You'll see it other places within accounting as well as other areas when we need to do some type of allocation or a ratio analysis. So we've got the appraisal amount here, the 35 land, the land improvements 15, and the building 90 for an adding up to the total of 140,000. What we're going to do now is take the percentage of the total for each of these and use that percentage to then allocate the 110. So for example, We'll take out the trusty calculator here. We're going to take the 35,000 divided by the total, 140,000. So that's 0.25 or 25% of the total. So that's 25%. If we take a look at the 15,000, 15,000 over compared to the total, 140,000, we get 10.7%. 10.71%. And then, of course, if we take the 90,000 divided by the 140, we get 0.6429. Uh, uh, and if we add all those up, then we get the 100%. So that's going to be our key here. So we're going to just say, obviously, if we take the 25 plus the 10.71 plus the 64.29, we get the 100%. So that means we can use this allocation to allocate this amount. So we're going to allocate the cost now, or just multiply each one times the cost, 110. 
So 25% of 110,000 gives 27,500. 10.71% of 110 gives 11,786. 64.29% of 110 gives that 70,714 for a total of the 110. So if we add all that up, 27,500 plus 11,786 plus 70,714 gives us our 110. So that's a very useful way to do this. So if we have some type of allocation method that doesn't quite allocate to the dollar amount we're looking for, we can still use it. We can still use the appraisal. What we'll do is we'll take the ratio of the amounts compared to the total. That'll give us the ratio then we, that we can then multiply by the cost to find the proper allocation or an appropriate allocation.